Gav Coombs comes up and makes that charge down on Manny Libok. You're talking, what, like 73, 74 minutes into the game, something like that. And he's played the entire game at that point. He's a, a big man carrying a lot, of, a lot of mass around with him. But like it's, it's him who gets up there. I know he's been very quick to remind people already on social media that it happened. He's calling it LeBlanc. Uh, but it was pivotal. <laughs> if he doesn't make that charge down, they may not get another opportunity. Um, and in the end, it's from that opportunity that Don Hondek goes over for the decisive score. No, it was massive because I think um, I, I don't, the Stormers, Stormers are guilty of putting in a lot of stupid kicks. Um, and that's probably one of the most frustrating things about them. And that's what we spoke about last week about they do give you opportunities. Um, and even the one the Yantis did just before half time when the clock's in the red to try and put a little grubber kick in. And, and they seem to, once they got that lead, then I think the coaches at half time said to them, look, we just got to make sure we just play it down there. So there was quite a bit of kick tennis. And Munster were finding it difficult to just get that, I suppose, one piece of possession, you know, further up the field um, that they could obviously go and try and win the game from. And, um, you know, I think Healy found grass initially, uh, um, and Libok I think stepped. They sent a shooter out of, out of the line up the field on his own, and Libok stepped him and thought he would comfortably get that ball away before Gav Coombs got to him. But that block down was massive, and you know the the effort that it would have taken, the fatigue he would have been under, um, well, was the turning point that gave Munster the the possession that obviously led to the the Hodna try and. Um, the massive moment for him. I, I think, going back to Archer, I think Archer's probably the most improved player. <laughs> like, earlier on the year, I was going, oh, Daly and Nash, they've really improved. But Archer, probably over the last month, um, is doing things he hasn't done his whole career. Um, and it, it's brilliant. It's brilliant to see, you know. And obviously, for him, like, Peter and Keith and Connor have had good days in the Irish jersey, you know, I, I, um, which doesn't make up for, obviously, t- tough times in Munster. But, um, they, you know, they they were part of this year's Grand Slam, etc. But I think for him, for him to be part of this and to play such a big role that he did, and obviously, um, you know, John Ryan was gone away for the, the Super Rugby, so he was, the pressure was on him massively. They needed him to step up, and and, and he did. Um, uh, and like you know, Coombs' moment was massive. So many big games, big moments from bunch of players, and some of it, um, wasn't about skill set. It was just about dog and, and digging in and uh they they are out muscled and out fought the stormers away from home in front of 50 whatever it was 55,000 people um and they deserve massive credit they outran them there's so many yeah. instances in the game where you just you get a wide view of the pitch and monster players just go past two or three each every time and the coombs one is a good example like he's already retreated down the pitch he's He's got a nice little escort line against Willem set so that Daly can gather the ball uncontested. It was a really clever bit of play. And he had to sprint to do that. You see him right beside Healy as Healy kicks the ball. And you kind of see the body language, oh, don't fucking kick it. And he goes and he doesn't think about it. He just goes and there's others behind him. You know, the, the second wave is there to gather the ball and to resource the ruck and to play away. And that happened on a number of occasions. Even the burn one, if you watch Lockman and Archer, they go past four or five Stormers players and they're not flat out. I mean, they're not the quickest guys in the world on, on a rugby pitch, but they go past Stormers players and that's obviously fitness, but it's also that desire to just be there. And Munster had that in, in bucket loads. It was another big passage in their own quarter, in the in their own 22 rather in the third quarter, I think it was, or maybe even the last quarter where the Stormers are battering, 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 and they can't break them down. Jean Klein makes a tackle, gets back to his feet and just counter rocks. And Scano smashes it too. They all fall back on Paul Devet, the sub scrum half, and he fires a ball away. And there's Coombs again leading the line up. Him and Scano make a chop tackle, and the Stormers just kick the ball away because they've run out of ideas. And it kind of summed up that unrelenting desire from from Munster not to let the opportunity slip away from them. And that's the well, it was a strange feeling watching that end game and having seen the third quarter go the way it did, and even the Stormers just getting kind of scrappy possession towards the end of the game. It never felt in doubt that Munster would create that opportunity. Maybe that's a feeling coloured by what happened against Leinster a couple of weekends beforehand. But when they actually did get it, like you mentioned there that that, uh, Troy Murray was the tail end of three minutes ball in play. Like with a soapy enough ball on a crap pitch, that was an unbelievable score to win any challenge. 
loads of skill in there, loads of rough precision again. At times it was a bit frenetic and frantic and they had to kind of steady themselves, but then they invariably found a bit of shape and made good, good decisions. I think even the phase before the actual try, Simon could have gone out the back and they could have gone to wit there, but they felt let's take one more carry. He has a little tip on to burn and that just condenses Stormers one last time and then it's a more straightforward finish and still takes a bit of finishing. Hodnett's power there and explosive ability in the 15 meter channel was really prominent again and he just loves tackling people really well he's an outstanding de- defender but you're right Gavin it could have been a day where they almost felt sorry for themselves because things didn't go their way perfectly you've had three tries chalked off in the first half and one of them certainly debatable and they felt it was definitely a try to the Gavin Coombs one and what did you just think? didn't they didn't lose focus at the time I thought it was a try I have to say I thought he reached out to score. But having looked back at it now, I'm almost coming around to Piardi's point of view on it because what they didn't show actually was a real-time replay of it from the kind of normal match angle. I think that's the most damning for, for Coombs is he uses his left arm twice to propel himself forward. Now, at no stage does his knee go to the grounds, which by the definition of a tackle being completed in the law book, it needs to. So... <laughs> we need a bit of clarity around this one. Also, Marvin O'Ree is probably offside. He has his hand planted down, which you're not supposed to do that close to the trial, and particularly not when it's in front of the back foot either. So there's a lot in it, but I think it was a justifiable decision, even if I still probably disagree with it. And if I was a the referee there, I'd just give the try, get on with it. I don't think anyone's going to say, oh, hang on a second, he uses arm, because we see that a lot close to the try line sometimes when there's no actual tackle in, involved. So I think it's a bit of a grey area, but if I was a ref, I would have just been given that and getting the hell out of there. What were your thoughts on it, Bert? Uh, yeah, a good instinct was it was a try, to be fair. Um, and I know the angles made made it look like it was a double movement. Um, I, I thought, he, I thought he, he did enough to score, to be fair. I didn't think the tackle was complete. I agree, Murray, I thought his knee wasn't on the ground. So it, it was an unusual position. He was kind of, his, his shoulders were down into the ground, but he, he was still technically up for me. So um, I think it could have been given. Yeah. You leave yeah. yourself with a bit of... If that's an okay try, then everyone's kind of crawling along the ground, maybe. You know? <laughs> like, a ball carrier should be on their feet running or trying yeah. to run. And I know that there's never a perfect instance to run because it's such a complex, complicated game. There's different players trying to do different things. But it is a bit of a strange one. And while... My initial impression was like, wow, that's a, a really bad call. Gardy's got that badly wrong. I don't feel as strongly about that at all, having had a look back at it. 